Okay. Um, so, guys, remember when we're finding the, the inverse tangent, what we're looking for is we're going to look for what the angle is, right? So, if I have the um, tangent, I have square root of 3 over 3. Well, first of all, we need to look at um, when is, well, actually, let's just look at how do we even get square root of 3 over 3, right? So, if I was to look at the unit circle, we have kind of three. Kind of have three important <laughs> main points, right? We have uh, this point is going to be one half radical three over two. This is sixty degrees, right? Okay. Then we have at forty degrees or forty-five degrees, we have square root of two over two, comma square root of two over two, and then at thirty degrees, we have radical three over two, comma one half. Does everybody follow me right there? See ya. Right. So. How do I get a tangent, right? Because we know cosine is x and sine is y. And tangent, remember, is y over x. So one of them gives us square root of 3 over 3. So which one of these angles gives us square root of 3 over 3? So what I can do is I can just take all of them and put my y over my x. So the first one, I do square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. Well, multiply it by the reciprocal and you get radical 3, okay? So therefore, what is the tangent of 60 degrees? It's not, your tangent, six, or I'm sorry, your tangent of 60 degrees is gonna give you radical, uh, radical 3, right? So it's obviously not this one. Then we'll look at the 45 degrees. Well, if I was gonna find the tangent of 45 degrees, Same, square root of 2 over 2, divide by square root of 2 over 2, those are the exact same numbers, so your tangent's going to equal 1. So a tangent of 45 <coughs> is equal to 1. So by process elimination here, yeah. we can use this one. So now when I multiply by the reciprocal coding, yes. that cancels out. I just didn't even multiply by the reciprocal. Let's multiply by 2 over radical 3. How about that? Okay. Then what happens is my 2's cancel out. I'm left with 1 over radical 3. Rationalize the denominator. And then you're left with radical 3 over 3. Which is exactly our answer. Right? So now, ladies and gentlemen, we know that we're dealing with an angle that is... Um, we know we're dealing with this angle right here, 30 degrees, right? However, when is tangent positive? Tangent positive not just in one angle, right? This is a positive radical 3 over 3. Tangent is positive in the first quadrant, and does anybody remember what other quadrant? The third. In the third quadrant, right? Because this could be a negative over another negative, right? But when we talk about inverses, remember we looked at the inverse of a graph, we have our restrictions for tangent are going to be between Remember, the restrictions of the inverse tangent are between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So then 30 degrees is my only possible answer. Does that make sense? We know that you could also have this angle right here. We know that you could also have a negative tangent, but that is not within our range for our uh, inverse tangent. So therefore, the only answer when I try to find inverse tangent is going to give me pi over 6, or 30 degrees. Does that make sense? Yes. So when you guys are dealing with tangent, there's only really kind of three possibilities you have. It's either radical 3 over 3, radical 3, or 1. And then what you need to just determine is which one is going to be in, you know, because then if it's positive, it's either in the first or the fourth, and if it's negative, it's either in the second, or sorry, the first and the third, and if it's negative, it's either in the second or the fourth. So then you need to determine, since Remember we talked about the range or the the restrictions on the domain or uh, for the tangent graph is only going to be between the first and the fourth. Make sense? So it all can be in the first and the fourth. Could you have 